Hey everyone, how is everyone doing out there? We're gonna do a little categorical variables. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. So in case you are stuck with a data set, finding a data set for this is actually quite easy. I just took something from Newsweek magazine. We have a hypothesis and then the alternative hypothesis, gun control is not dependent on gender or gun control is dependent on gender. So what exactly are we doing here? So let's take a look and let's just make a data set from this. So women 69% agree with gun control, whereas 26% they don't, and men are split down the middle. Let's see if there's a significance in the, uh, basically we're measuring whether it's dependent or not dependent, and they use the p-value in this chi-square test. This is just for, as you can see, categorical variables, the percentage versus gender. Now, this would be good for anything if you're interested uh, in doing something like this. And you can get this data because it's easy to do, but you have to make a matrix. And it's usually done with two variables here with you could uh, code for a few more over here. But what we're going to see, it's it, then you might need multinomial, which we're going to do. But basically, you know, I'm flexible uh, getting towards the end of the semester, what kind of uh, paper you want to do. So, you know, a, a gender based paper like this on any question using survey data or how people vote or uh, you have people in criminal justice, something like that is completely fine. So what are we basically uh, doing now? The way I learned it is you basically, you know, to make this quick matrix, you have, you know, what do you want to call this data set? And we'll call this data set, well, gun control. And we're going to create, uh, essentially, this rebind on this. This is a function. I'm not sure if you have to download something for it. You might need the deeper, uh, but uh, it might already just be on mine. But, oops my mistake. Uh, let's see if I have to essentially do anything done. No, not, let me see if it's not that. Yeah, there it is. Good. That's a good way to check whether you have it on your um, R or not. So we're basically going to do this. What do we have? We go down 69. So let's say 69% women. So women will end up being first. And what I like about it, and I'm going to show you here, is if you make a mistake on the matrix, which I always do, as you probably know, uh, is, is, is good. And we have women. We'll do women first, 69. But then this matrix, I'm going to make it so this is support. So gun control support is 69. And then men, 47. And then we have the other one, 26, which is women significantly against. If you love guns, you see, maybe like what Ann Coulter once said, she said, well, maybe women shouldn't have the right to vote. <laughs> That's a little crazy, but she's very right wing. So anyways, the point is, so we have that here and we want to make sure uh, this is okay. So that seems okay. Now we use the D uh, names, uh, demon names, uh, these all these packages they create they they say different names different things but basically let's see yep here it is we this is what we're going to be calling the different um, um, levels so this is basically gun control here it is so you know it's hooked up so what are we gonna call gun control. Well, let's just see first. This isn't what we're calling. This isn't a name, by the way. This is putting in a whole different function as you're going to see. So we're going to call this, this is going to be the list. List always goes down. I tried to make it uh, sound like list will always go down. So whatever these names will be going down, you're going to be able to see this so it's clear. But it's just like the Y axis, the Y points down. I always think of L begins with list and that points down. And you're going to kind of understand when this uh, matrix is made. So the list goes down. So basically we have support. So support will end up going down. And I did this before, as you can probably see over here, I was doing a simulation and stuff like that on this and using different data sets, seeing how we can um, basically do this. So the list is gonna go down, let's call it support. And that support 
is equal to C. Now we're using that function because you basically, um, we're gonna be calling it something. So let's just say four, because the first one is four. Let's go back up here. Oops, not here. Uh, here, up here now. Four is women is 69% and men is 47%. So four, and what would be another word? How about this? Against. So we have four and against. That's the list. And then we're basically going to see uh, what's the another thing we'll have to call it? Well, for lack of a better name, gender. Gender will be considered women and men because women here right? And then oh, no comma and men. So we have these different things, men, women, etc. So there should be, let's see, yep, we got it. So we basically have those different things. So let's just take a look, see if I get it correct. One of the great things, even if I don't, who cares, but I do, um, is that let's say I made a mistake, just go back, right? Look at, oh, wow, I, I, I confused those, put 47 here, put 27 there. I mean, you get the uh, picture, but you can just go back and correct it. You don't have to write everything out again. So here's our little matrix. We have gender, we have support, support for women, 69%, men, 47%, uh, against, etc. And then, you know, you could do different things. People have asked me about crim uh, 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 criminology, the percentage of, say, you know, incarcerated, not incarcerated, you know, uh, 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 African-American, Hispanic, Hispanic, white, and then non-white, you know, something like that, like Asian, et cetera. And you can do it by race, you can do it by gender. You do a wide range of things with this test and you're all probably thinking, wow, this is easier. <laughs> Why do you tell us about this before? Because this is easier for the uh, collection of data. It's not continuous. So you're just using these categorical things. The only thing is you'd have to watch this a couple of times to get this whole R-bind list, et cetera, down. But, you know, you could easily take it uh, start writing it out and then uh, basically you just copy it for your same thing. So instead of gun control, you might have incarceration. Instead of gun control, you might have, you know, how uh, uh, others are, are voting, men and women in, say, the, the uh, presidential election, etc. So there's a lot you can do with this. It is limited by the statisticians, like a, a diehard statistician would say, oh, if you start uh, having more of these, oops, sorry, uh, um, categorical variables where you're running like six on six or something like that, then you'd have to do nine, uh, a multinomial. So try to keep it to two. And then, you know, I've seen it like say, uh, the way this is up, it's, you know, you can do it different ways. You could do gender here and then support here. But for right now, you know, if this was men and women have those two variables for, against, maybe, etc. You can add different ones there, but they do like to keep it at the independent variable at two, according to everything I've read. But I have seen people do it with more than two. Um, but, you know, you, you want two, one, basically, uh, independent variable. When I say two, I meant two attributes. So, and then uh, you could add a few more down here of the dependent for, uh, uh, for against, maybe, et cetera. So you have, you know, incarceration, yes, no, and then have a wide range of different um, ethnicities. But the thing is, this just runs on the chi-square. It's kind of easier. So we're going to just do the test, and I want to stop talking. That would, uh, And you basically have, what are we going to do? We're going to do the gun. All right, so then that's it. <laughs> it's like, this is a lot easier. And, and what you're getting here is just simply the X squared. That's that's what they use to get the p-value. And the p-value shows this is significant. Now, a lot of people say, well, I know it's significant here. But you have to still run the test. It's like sometimes some things are so, so um, extreme. They seem that they're going to be, you know, dependent on each other. So we would reject the null in this case, gender control is not dependent and say gender control is dependent on gender. So you can basically um, uh, 
uh, uh, reject the null. Now, what's the Yates continu continuity? That basically is a lot like we've talked about before, uh, testing and it's basically panelizing to a different degree, making it more difficult to get the P value. But if you try to run it without that, I believe it's correction I want, oh, correct, uh, and then false. And let's see, see this won't have it. So the p-value, if you notice, goes down. So that's very important to understand. What they're trying to do in statistics all the time is uh, through, you know, clever ways. This isn't a math class, so you won't have to know, you know, all the math behind it. Uh, but it is important to note that, you know, in, in, to make it more difficult to get a p-value less than the conventional in the social sciences, 0 0.05. So this chi-square test shows that gender is an important variable. So you can do this with a wide range. Now the question becomes, how would I, for my paper, if I did this or anything else, this uses a cool mosaic uh, plot. So the plot is basically, is that it? No, that must not be. Yeah. Mosaic. Lot. I'm going to go try and see that. Uh, as usual, I had to check that out. I did uh, spell it wrong. Now, I would like to say to everyone that I did that on purpose, but as you know me, I'm a terrible speller. So let's take a look if we can get this going with the mosaic. Yes, we got it. Uh, so gun control. Let's see what this does. This is cool. Uh, just make sure to spell it right, unlike me. So yes, look at this. This is cool. I want to make it cool because this is for gun control. So let's take a look at what we can do with this. Now, like you people know, let's call it uh, something else, you know, just to, so the main will be gun control support, all right? And then as you know, we have the X, Y, um, you know, and let's say, just so we can do it, we'll change some names around here. The X lab will be um, gun control support again, uh, let's call it, um, Support for gun control. It's, I just want to change it. So, oops. Uh, so we know that that we can do it. Support for oops. and then for the Y lab. Let's take a look. We will use um, support by gender. Now what's interesting with this is we are basically going to have uh, different colors because who wants the other colors? So this is how you do this. Um, let's take a look. Which one do I use? I believe it is this one. But I want to say that when we do colors, let me see, I'm pretty sure it's I always forget. Let's see, let's take a look. Uh, two and five. Let's see if that comes up well. All right, it did. So basically, look at that. The five I remembered from doing this before with different datas and, and other things is that this is, okay, you get the support for gun control. We changed that. We support, we changed the name, main. We support this support by gender. We got women, men, and then you have against, for and against that's already in there. And then we have the colors and the colors are kind of cool. You can do different things. So let's do like four and, and don't ask me the names of like why, they do it like this. This is just what I found. And I was doing all these different colors. So eight and let's say 12. Um, it's just different colors that you uh, can basically do. 
So that is what we can do with this. What color? I say I like the five. So I'm definitely going to give someone a five. And I like, was it four red? Uh, no, four is blue or something. Um, I don't know exactly. I forget the way the colors are. I'm sure there's, it's out there in internet world. But we're basically uh, doing that. So you have a pretty cool uh, paper with this because you'll have your graph. And then you'll have uh, some kind of data set. And a lot of the times with this, um, they might do a Monte Carlo to make sure that your, uh, it's just another test to see that the p-value is true by um, simulating the study to make sure you're not getting, say, uh, a, a, a false positive here or you know you're not making that type one error bias so what the monte carlo does is it runs it it runs it again with the data it's given to see if this is true or not uh and you know there's definitely limitations with uh the monte carlo but with the chi the chi square i say chi, don't ever say that because uh people be like don't say chi chi you know it's with the chi-square. So you basically are going to want to do the simulation. So if you want to do the Monte Carlo, we got gun control. Um, and is it, let's take a look. We want to simulate, simulate the p-value, which is true. Uh, that's what we got. We said that the p-value is true. And then you simulate it as many times as you want. Oops. So how many times would we want to do this? Like, say, 10,000 times. It actually goes over. So, yeah, we got an even a, a, a lower p-value showing that, according to this, that when we're taking gun control and we keep on running it within R, that it is true that the p-value is low. And now, as I said, I mean, I'm incredulous about some of these tests, but that's called the Monte Carlo, where, as obviously, like gambling, you know, you keep on spinning it, you're spinning it, spinning it to see if you continue to get the uh, p-value at least lower than in our social sciences and others, 0 0.05, to show that this is independent gender and gun control is dependent or not dependent. And we find that it is dependent, uh, uh, alternative hypothesis. So you can basically say that there is a significant correlation between gender and uh, con uh, gun control support. And then you have your nice little graph here. So this is something you can do for your paper. This works well with gender if you only use like uh, uh, men and women, but you know, be, feel free. Although some statisticians say you'll have to change to a multinomial, which we're gonna do if we have time. Um, in order to do like say male, woman, transgender or something like that. But, you know, if you want to keep it simple, just have those two variables, men, women, you know, uh, incarcerated, yes, no. And then you, you can um, see if there's a correlation between all the other variables. So uh, I hope that helps a little. Maybe you could do something like a paper here, something similar. We just look at this. This is just four uh, 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 attributes, uh, two very, you know, four and again, support. That's the dependent variable, then the independent variable, gender, and then you have two attributes, women and men. So you could do something like that for your paper. And you can get data from anywhere. I got this data from Newsweek. You know, so you definitely, wherever you get the data, you want to explain it, et cetera. So I hope that was a, a decent lecture for you to kind of understand what's going on with the chi-square test and how you can actually use it. And it's fun. You could take a lot of data and just start doing it like this and, and do it. So if you have any questions, uh, 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 please, in community forum would be great so other people can hear the uh, read the response. Or if you want to just reach out by email or Zoom or something like that, uh, give me a email. Take care, everyone, and stay safe. And if you've noticed, I'm not dying in this video. So I must have got good ventilation or something like that. Take care, everyone.